Hello everyone, for this Music Talk Tuesday, I thought it would be interesting to discuss in particular villain songs, in particular villain songs that are within animation, because uh, they are really the ones that I think are the most well-known and the most famous kinds of villain songs. And these villain songs are not necessarily good um, in quality, in fact they're fairly bad in quality, and that's why they're called so get so bad they get the category of so bad it's good villain songs. And what I mean by this is that um they do have a very low quality, but they do offer the bad aspect to the story, which is the villain. And but at the same time they're so cheesy and just completely ridiculous and you, you, for some reason I just can't help but laugh at them. So that's why they kind of go in the sort of so bad is good category. So therefore, the title of this video for this Music Talk Tuesday is So Bad It's Good Animated Villains Songs. Or Animated Villain Songs. I'll probably try to reword the wording a little bit, but basically that's the gist of what I'm going to be talking about today. And I'm going to sort of explain why they are bad and why, or at least in my opinion, why I think they're bad. And why I think that they um, still hold some kind of weight in regards to entertainment because they are just so ridiculous and so bad. So, without further ado, let me discuss them. The first one that I wanted to discuss is called No More Mr. Nice Guy from the Swan Princess film. The first one. And oh my gosh, this song. It's its so unexpectedly ridiculous and cheesy. It's a jazz number. <laughs> and uh, it's sung by our main villain, Rothbart. And basically, the gist of the song is so off-kilter from what they were initially setting Rothbart out to be. Because... Originally, they seem to make Rothbart seem rather intimidating. They give him this whole piece within the beginning where he basically turns into this great animal and then attacks the king and one of our main leads, Odette, the princess. And for some reason, they decide to give him a jazz number. It completely just demolishes any kind of sort of credibility they were trying to establish with this villain, especially with when they were initially trying to go for a serious tone. I mean, I was just completely blown by just how ridiculously um, over the top they made this song. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they chose to make it a jazz song. But not only is the song genre choice a fairly bad one. Um, the lines of the song are pretty, uh, not, or just not well constructed. For example, one of the lines is, I pull my punches and I intend to eat their lunches. Yes, yes, he wanted to rhyme punches with lunches. Does that sound like an intimidating villain to you? I don't think so. I mean, it's just so un it's just so unbelievable in how literally the and not only does the sort of tone shift into what and basically sort of change Rothbart's character, it also they also alter the animation because the animation comes out of nowhere as being really ridiculous and over the top like they were really trying to go with a genie, Aladdin sort of feel with like, you know, sort of breaking the fourth wall and changing characters just randomly for no reason. But at least with the genie, there were certain aspects that made it interesting to watch and sort of held a sort of significance because what he was talking about was relevant to what he was changing. And at times... You're like, why is he changing this person into an ostrich <laughs> in in the Swan Princess song? Um, no more Mr. Nice Guy. You you wonder why Rothbard is suddenly changing things because he's some kind of sorcerer where he can change things into whatever he wants. It is the weirdest. It, it's just so 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 strange. Um, I really don't. 
don't get it. Um, I really, 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 really don't understand, like, why, <laughs> why it needs to be this way. I mean, they just completely, uh, just altered everything with just how they approach this song. And basically within the song, Rothbard also explains his intentions, and that completely gets demolished because, again, he does it in such a light-hearted, jazzy number. You just you just can't take it take it seriously. And also, even the title of the song, "No More Mr. Nice Guy." He never was a nice guy. Like like literally in the beginning, he literally sets up to capture um, Odette, and he literally, I guess, kills the king. I mean. This guy is, this guy was never nice to begin with, so I don't get why all of a sudden this song is trying to act like a transformation. Um, is it trying to transform Rothbard into some, like, very suave, jazzy, not taken seriously villain? Like, I, I just don't understand, because not, because... This really proves that not only does the tone shift, not only does the character kind of shift, but the the whole movie itself doesn't even know what to do with this character, whether they want to make him serious, whether they want to make him a lighthearted sort of funny villain. And given his past circumstances, I mean... I don't get why they suddenly decided to, to to switch him into being like kind of this um, upbeat and fun villain because he's not really all that fun and he's not really all that interesting. So I really don't get what they were doing with this character at all. Like I don't understand it. It's, it's just unbelievable though because it just, the song itself completely alters everything. And it really shows how a song can really impact a movie. In particular, a animated musical type movie. And this song is proof of that. Because you totally see, if you watch the, entire, the film in entirety, you see that shift. And you just, you just, you just kind of sit back and go... <laughs> Oh gosh, were they really going for this? Were they really trying to do this? So, definitely a really really cheesy number. It's it's a lot of fun if you if you just kind of sit back and laugh at how bad it is. Uh, and that's kind of what I do. I just kind of laugh at the song throughout the entire thing because I go, oh my gosh, they were just trying to make a villain song. Oh how cute! They were really trying to be like the genie, were they? They were really. Except with the villain. They were really trying to go for it. Oh, it just it just makes me laugh. It's it's hilarious. It's just hilarious, I think, how bad it is. So, that's that song. The next song that I'm going to briefly discuss is also part of the Swan Princess franchise. Um <laughs> Which is really not saying all that much, but it's part of the Swan Princess 2 movie, and it's called You Gotta Love It, which is sang by another sorcerer. And I, for the life of me, I don't remember this guy's name for some reason, but you'll see how he's relatively distinct compared to Rothbard, because at least he has like a long beard, and he's relatively older looking than Rothbard. But basically, his song is pretty much similar to Rothbard. Um, but I will get into why this song in particular is not really trying to, I think, alter so much, because the villain is, at the, even at the beginning, is, like, one that, you know, you really can't take seriously. But, basically, instead of this being a jazz number, oh yeah, and instead of being a jazz number, this song is a rock song. And at one point, the villain who's singing the song, has, on I think actually multiple occasions, an electric pink guitar. 
and he jams on this pink electric guitar. I am not kidding you. That is part of the song. That is the whole point. And unlike Rothbard's song that is kind of just out there and has different sort of parts to it as to what the song sort of represents, this song is just basically about how the villain's got a lot of power and how awesome he is. That's pretty much the entire song. <laughs> it just has a pink guitar and just... It's just, and he's trying to be so cool. Oh my gosh, the song tries so hard to be hip. I mean, it's unbelievable how how hard this song tries. It's it's like it's like they tried to make him somehow um, funny and ridiculous, but even at the same time, they sort of insult themselves by doing that because it's just so ridiculous. Like, oh, just. Unbelievable how ridiculous this song is. Um, and the interesting thing is, is not only is this song, not only does the song really serve no purpose because we already know that this guy's got a lot of power, um, but, <laughs> but it serves as a plot device because he, at one point you'll see he's so distracted and so into the music that he cannot see that the heroes are trying to, you know, force his plan. <laughs> he, he's like so into jamming on his guitar that he doesn't see the heroes trying to take his only source of power. Which apparently is supposed to be like this orb thing. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. <laughs> and... It also attempts to try to break sort of the, the fourth wall with, like, you know, changing things and, you know, referencing things that don't exist, like, you know, guitar and, and you know, the, 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 first, um, the first song that I mentioned also does this, too. So they really do suffer from, a sim from similar problems, but I think ultimately the rock Bart's problem suffers significantly more because they really did try to make him seem like a character that we would take seriously and that we would... Um, and that we would ultimately see as an intimidating villain, but instead he he no he's just a he, he's just a ridiculous goofy goofy sorcerer, and this is the same thing with the Swamp Princess too. Like you do see this the same problem, but it's really downplayed because the villain in itself is someone that I don't think we should take all that seriously, especially when. Um, he doesn't really capture any, he, he captures, um, not any of the main characters, but a side character, the queen, which is the prince's mom, and the reason why this doesn't come off as serious as the first film is because she's loud, she's obnoxious, so, um, so he basically has to take captive an obnoxious person. And even he can't figure out how to, like, you know, shut her up. And he has all this power to do so. It just it just blows my mind. Like, <laughs> so I don't think initially they wanted this villain to be as serious as Wathbart. So I guess I could give it points for not trying to, like, basically alter everything. But it it really shows just, though, how, how ridiculous and... I think for this one, though, unlike Rothbard's song, where I think it was kind of trying, this song really tries. And I think just that having that pink electric guitar there and just having him jam on it, I think that just basically sums up everything. <laughs> I think it just it just gives the, 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 the whole song basically what it ultimately really offers, which is a complete goof nut crazy song that ultimately serves no purpose. Ooh, it's just, it's, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad, but it's just so laughable. It's just so great and how bad it is. Um, 
on how hip it's trying to be. Like, it's really trying to be hip. And trust me, once you see that electric guitar and you see what he's trying to do, you know, with especially with the lines he's using, like, you gotta love it. You know, he's trying to be, like, that hip person. And that hip sorcerer, I guess. And trying to get the kids to like him for some reason. <laughs> but... Enough of that song. Let's move on to the next song, which apparently has probably the most uncreative name out of all of these songs, and it's just titled Rupert, which is the villain whose name's Rupert, even though Rupert is pretty, I don't think it's really mentioned throughout the song, the name, um, but I mean, it is about what the villain wants to do, I mean... And this song is from Quest for Camelot, and basically, oh my gosh, hearing Gary Oldman sing is just, is just so hilarious to me, because he's trying to sing and trying to talk at the same time, and it's pretty funny. You're just like, really? No, 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 <laughs> Gary, you can't do it, you can't do it, Gary, you just can't, you, you can't do it. Just, 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 just have Jim Cummings do it for you. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's, it's just so, so ridiculous and and how he's trying to act because I mean Gary Oldman is an actor and really what he was trying to do was ultimately act out the song. But the thing is, is you can't really act out a song. What you have to do is with a song is you have to sing it and at the same time display within your voice some kind of emotion relating to the song. And when someone tries to attempt to do that, but ultimately can't sing, it's so sad. It's so sad. I feel so bad for Carrie. I feel so bad. I'm sorry, Carrie. <laughs> and not only is this attributed to Gary Ullman and trying to be, like, over the top and crazy, but the animation in itself is very goofy at times, and I don't think really knows what it wants to do with the characters. Like... At one point, you see Rupert, and he's like, he's like trying to explain his whole plan, and he he, he literally starts going. He he almost does like a robot motion thing, where he's like, "And I'm about to," <laughs> or just just blah 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 blah. Like he just says it. In the, he says it in such a weird way. He's just like, "Ooh, this is this is my plan." <laughs> And it just comes off as just so bad, like, just unbelievable in how he's trying to sound intimidating, but he ultimately sounds like just a creepy, weird, mad scientist. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Um, and even the song within itself can't be a song, because Lily, it's not only just the fact that Gary Oldman has trouble singing the song, the song itself is so poorly constructed, like, really poorly. Like, there's no chorus, there's no, uh, there's, doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's any verses either. It just feels like it's just, it's just Gary Ullman trying to sing some of his songs with maybe some musical accompaniment in the background. Like, literally, that's the best way I can describe this song. <laughs> like, this is what this song does. <laughs> and it's just so ridiculous and... And how Gary Ullman tries to, to, to sing at certain points, like, out his plan. Like, I have a plan. Do, 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 do. Boo, boo, do, 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 Camelot. <laughs> oh, my. I'm sorry. I just can't help but laugh because it's just so ridiculous. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And I think... It's confusing at times because at points you don't know if the song is really trying to be a song or if it's trying to just be talking. Because at, at some points, you know, there's actual dialogue and then there's like Gary Oldman attempting to sing. And you don't even know if this is really supposed to be a song in the first place. And... Oh my, it's just it's just so badly constructed. So it's it's not only, I think... The fact that Gary Oldman has trouble singing the song, but I think already in the song's construction, it's just so poorly mapped out that you ultimately are going to end up with a, 
horrible product regardless if you have an opera person coming up and singing, you know, and, and or even if you'd have Jim Cummings sing this song, it, 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 I mean, it probably would come out good, but at the same time, it's so badly constructed, you wonder if even anybody could pull off the song sounding good because it's just, it's, there's just nothing for the actors and to work with. So, that's that song in particular. And it does take itself seriously, unlike the previous two songs that I mentioned, where it's a little bit harder and edgier and trying to act all cool. But at the same time, it just, it comes off as just really badly constructed. Um, so that's that song. And I'm not going to attempt to pronounce this next song's name properly because I think I'm going to get it wrong because I'm really bad with yodeling, yodeling, or just the, the, the terms for yodel, for that people say when they yodel. So I'm just going to do the best I can to, um, to say this, but yodeladaloo from... <laughs> Home on the Range. Oh my, this song. Where to begin? This is probably the worst Disney villain song I have ever heard. Like, it is unbelievable how horrible this song is. It's badly constructed. It's badly written. It's something that you probably could have heard from a million times over. The only purpose that it does to serve the plot is to show what the villain could do, which is apparently hypnotize cows by yodeling, which I think is the stupidest thing I have ever heard a song base itself on. And even though the animation can maybe be creative at times, it's just completely out of its element and has really nothing to do with how a farm life is. Like, the sequence in Dumbo made sense because Dumbo was surrounded in a crazy, crazy, crazy world and had an environment that suited some kind of ridiculous animation to come out, even if it maybe ultimately doesn't serve a purpose. But here, on a farm, like, this psychedelic, you know, crazy song has really no purpose in regards to in regards to its setting like like a farm does not warrant yodeling first of all like yodeling is is not a part of farm at least a significant portion part of farm culture i mean yodeling is very European, and I mean, yeah, people could probably have taken some inspiration and maybe incorporated it into their culture within the United States, but majority of yodeling is, is fairly European. Um, it's, it, I mean, there probably is some kind of yodeling, I'm sure, within certain American cultures, but it just feels so out of place, like, it just... And and the fact that, that this is really the biggest thing the villain can do is just hypnotize cows with yodeling just shows how low low how uncreative and low Disney sank during that point. Because that it really shows the epitome of how bad it is. But I can't help but laugh at it because it's just so ridiculous. I mean when you see the animation, I you just you just can't help but go did Disney really do this? Like, this is, this is so ridiculous. And then you just can't help but laugh. And I mean, that's kind of the reaction I had with this song. Like, just unbelievable how bad this is. Unbelievable. But it's so bad it's good because it just shows you the complete stupidity that went into it and and how it's, it's it does not serve a purpose ultimately at all. Um, but it doesn't really alter anything, unlike the first song that I mentioned, and it's, it's, but it does have that sort of goofy tone that the, uh, the first two songs that I mentioned have, but I, I don't think it really tries to, um, be about magic as it is about just a, tr a 
some kind of weird trip. I don't know. It's just, oh, it's just, it's just so weird. It's, it's so hard to describe that song because it's just freaking weird. Um, and it's really chaotic, the animation within itself and along with the song. So, ooh, just, it's really bad. Now, the next song I'm going to mention is actually not from Disney canon, but from Disney sequel land. And this one is from The Beauty and the Beast and the Enchanted Christmas, which apparently is a prequel. So, I guess I can call this prequel slash sequel territory. But basically, it's called Don't Fall in Love. And guess who sings this song? Another famous actor, Tim Curry. He sings this song, and oh my gosh. This is probably the worst Disney sequel song I've ever heard. It's just so badly constructed. Like, like really, really, really badly constructed. <laughs> um, and it repeats itself over and over again. It doesn't seem to change. I mean, Tim Curry's voice is, is okay. I mean, I feel like he is putting on a performance. But the material he's given with is just... It's just unbelievable how incapable the song, the song is of, of grasping you. Um, and... Not only is it um, ridiculous in how it sounds, because it, you have this great actor, Tim Curry, and then at the same time you have this, <laughs> this god-awful production of a song, but then, on top of that, you have the ridiculous animation that goes on, like with Tim Curry creating notes and then somehow creating cupids, and I literally feel like Beast throughout the entire song. Like, he's just like, there's a point where the, where Beast is like really eye, or just his his eyes are just like <laughs> he he doesn't know how to feel at all, and a point to he 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 just he he doesn't even know if if this is really reality at all, and I don't blame him because I mean I think that's probably what the song was going for, but still, it's just so unbelievable just how. How badly it's how badly it's constructed. I mean, and and it's it has a really kind of stupid message too. Of oh, don't fall in love because you know that means you don't have any freedom and blah 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 blah. And it just has that BS message, kind of like similar to uh, Thumbelina's the Thumbelina song of. Marry the Mole, uh, but I would have put that one on the list, but for some reason, I don't think Miss Fieldmouse gets classified as a villain, because she's not doing really villainous things, I mean, all she is is saying Marry the Mole, but I don't know, so I, I don't think I could really put her in that category, but the way I describe this song is sort of similar to how I would describe Thumbelina's song in regards to its lyrics, it's it's basically a, a don't fall in love song, and how it's bad to, and ooh, you're going to have bad stuff happen to you, and ooh, you know, just, and it's the same thing with, you know, um, Thumbelina's song where, oh, you should marry the mole, because that's the most logical thing to do, and yeah, it just has a very honed in message, and even though Tim Curry's character is who is the villain is doing it for um Beast to not fall in love, it really just comes off as a very petty um like just a very, very, very petty uh, uh villain song because it really doesn't ultimately serve a purpose and it doesn't really grow the villain as a character. It 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 just oh it's it's a complete complete disaster of a of a song but it's just so laughable because every time i see it and i see beast's reactions those are the same kinds of reactions i have 
like just what the what what I that's 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 just the, basically the reactions I have. It's basically every single face, every single weird face that comes into beasts or that comes onto beasts' face is pretty much my reaction for the entire song. And then I can't help but laugh at it because I'm just like, oh, it's it's so bad, but it's so good because it's so bad, and also because I think that Len Tim Curry sort of lends lends himself to being that suave. Yes, I'm singing about how love is stupid and blah 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 blah. And I apologize that my Tim Curry accent is is, is bad, but <laughs> but the song is worse. <laughs> um, but. I think ultimately, though, that's really all I can say about this one in particular. It just has some of these bad aspects to it, but Tim Curry kind of lends himself to the song because it's just so laughably ridiculous. But ultimately, I think all these songs sort of serve the ultimate purpose of being so bad that they're good in that they make you laugh unintentionally. And they make you look at the film in a completely different way. And all the songs that I've mentioned basically sort of revolve around that. And, oh my, they're, they're really bad. I wouldn't recommend listening to them. But I would recommend just kind of laughing at just how bad they are. But ultimately, I think that's really all I can say about these songs. I will put all the links below so you can all check them out for yourself and see what you ultimately think. I would recommend, though, watching the films in their entirety because it does explain, you know, sort of the context leading up to these songs, even though ultimately these songs really don't serve that much of a purpose. But at the same time, they do kind of make things a little bit worse. <laughs> um... And you kind of see the context as to why when you watch the films. Uh, but ultimately, I think that's really all I can say. But if there are any questions, comments, concerns, more than happy to answer them. But until next time, everybody.